it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you have a Compute Engine instance that uses the default Debian image. The application hosted on this instance recently suffered a series of crashes that you weren't able to debug in real time. The application process died suddenly every time. The application usually consumes 50% of the instance's memory and normally never more than 70%. But you suspect that a memory leak was responsible for the crashes. You want to validate this hypothesis. What should you do? So in this project scenario, what you have witnessed is a series of crashes from one application. We don't have logs because it crashed suddenly each time. Now, we do have a hypothesis that it was probably a memory leak. And we know that typically this application consumes 50% to 70% of the instance memory, but never more. And maybe something around that will help us validate this hypothesis. So in looking at the requirements, one, we know it's a recurring event. Right? So it's going to happen again and we can seemingly predict, but not exactly when it is going to happen. Until now, we do not know the root cause because we weren't able to debug in real time. And that is something we probably want to do now. Each time the application died suddenly, which means app logs, if there were any, they were not useful then and probably is not going to be useful in the future. We do know that the memory usage for that instance by this application is 50 to 70 percent. So when would we kind of think that there is going to be a crash when this memory is going to increase very quickly? So if you want to validate this hypothesis that is a memory leak, what we should be looking for is just around the time prior to the crash happening. With that understanding of the requirement analysis, let's go look at each of the options. Option A suggests, go to Stackdriver's metric explorer and look for the system slash problem count metric for that instance. Examine its value for when the application crashed in the past. Now you do not need to know all of these metrics that are generated by default or via the monitoring agent. But just by looking at the name, we have a fair idea of what this might be. Problem count seems to be a count of the number of times this has happened. If you want to look a little further, in the documentation it does say that it is the number of times a machine problem has happened. Is this useful for us? Not really. Just knowing the number of times a system crashed is not giving us any information about what was the memory usage at that time or if there were any other variables that were not favorable for the application. So just getting a total count of the number of times the crash is unhelpful and therefore we will eliminate option A. Option B suggests in Stackdriver create an uptime check for your application. Then create an uptime, sorry, create an alert policy for that uptime check to be notified when your application crashes. When you receive an alert, use your usual debugging tools to investigate the behavior of the application in real time. So in this situation, what is being suggested is that we continuously watch the machine using a health check, an uptime check. And when the machine crashes, let us have an alert come to us. And at that point, we go investigate and see what is happening. But an uptime check alert or notification will come way after the crash. Right? It is after the application has crashed, the prober or the uptime check is going to check maybe once and then wait for a couple of seconds or so and then try again. And it's going to be at least a few seconds before it qualifies it saying this machine has crashed or this application has crashed. And if you receive an alert after that, it becomes too late to then go and investigate the application real time because it has already crashed. So having an uptime check is an after the fact situation 
and it isn't useful for us. Therefore, we will eliminate option B also. Option C suggests install the stack driver monitoring agent on the instance. Go to stack driver's metric explorer and look for the memory percent use metric for that instance. Examine its value for when the application crashed in the past. So here we are installing the monitoring agent because this particular metric is not there default. Now, what does this give us? Percent use again, right? just looking at the name, we can guess what would be the metric that we're going to see. So this essentially gives us the amount of memory used by each memory state. But this gives us no useful information. At best, it would indicate that at the point of crash, there was a large amount of memory used. But is that the real indication that there's a memory leak? Or could it be that the application is behaving as expected, right? With no memory leaks, but it was just consuming more memory. So this by itself is not useful. Now it could indicate that again, it could give us a direction saying, oh, there seems to be a sudden spike in memory usage uh, around the time this crash is happening, but it does not give us enough to debug and investigate more. Therefore, for that reason, we'll eliminate option C. Option D suggests install the stack driver monitoring agent on the instance. Create an alert policy on the memory percent use metric for that instance to be alerted when the memory use is higher than 75%. When you receive an alert, use your usual debugging tools to investigate the behavior of the application in real time. So this is very similar to the last option that we saw. We're starting off the monitoring agent and we're using memory percent use. That's also the same. However, we have an alert set where the alert comes in when the memory usage reaches 75%, which means that the machine is probably not crossed, I mean, not crashed because it's still about 25% of the memory to be used. At that point, though, as soon as we get the alert, we're like, oh, okay, now we've got the alert. Now we should be going investigating the machine, right? So this happens prior to the crash. And therefore, it gives us the opportunity to go uh, log into the machine, to um, use the usual debugging tools as mentioned, and then investigate the application behavior in real time. So it's important in this case, as opposed to uh, earlier one, that the alert has arrived before the event occurred, and that gives us the ability to investigate and debug the running application just prior to when the issue is going to occur. So of all the available options, option D to be alerted at about 75% memory usage in advance of the crash is the best option so that we can go investigate the application in real time. If you're interested in picking up loads more learning on Google Cloud, go ahead and subscribe right away. Mm -hmm.